Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to Unit Lost. I am Stylosa and I'm finally back from LA where the UK World Cup team performed absolutely beautiful. It was a joy, an absolute joy to behold. 15 and 0. Oh baby. Anyway, what the hell is this video about? Well, this video is about the chance of getting a thrower in a competitive game. Because this is a hot topic, right? Everybody's always going on about this. So, well, there seems to be throwers in all of my games. Well, there's actually a user on the competitive Overwatch Reddit who's actually compiled a list of all of the games he's taken part in. We're talking hundreds of games. And the reason why they lost that game and also the heroes that he played. So it's very comprehensive. Now, obviously... Before we go into detail on this, because it is a fantastic post, so massive shout out to GRFZTTV, total credit for uh, what we're about to talk about in this video, um, is this kind of thing has been happening for a while. You know, I've made videos on this where I've spoke about my competitive experience, especially on some of my other accounts. Now, generally, I play the game around about 4.2k. But, as you guys know, I do have a lower rated account, which was, uh, it was in Lower Master. I guess they've probably all decayed now because I've been in um, LA. But, it was a Lower Master level account. Um, and it was very frustrating for that account to kind of get anywhere. Because the games were kind of all over the place. You get somebody who throws. You get people who just insta-lock heroes and don't change. Uh, there's no communication. Loads of other issues. So, me, myself, as a player, I can relate to the, what this guy is saying. Like, when you get higher, yeah, people will communicate and, yeah, people will build proper teams. Whereas, when you're lower in the ladder, it doesn't happen as much. And now, obviously, logic would dictate that the lower you go, so if you go into diamond and platinum and below, then these things are going to be worse. And I know for a fact they are because all of you guys who send me information in. So, let's take a look at this post. What I'm going to do is read bits of this post off. I'm not going to impose this onto the screen because it's a very, very long post. So, essentially, Essentially, this is what he decided to do. So it's season five, and he decided to see if he just picked up an account and just started playing the game, what the hell would happen? He said he's not a toxic player and he's a flex player. This is what I, this is me basically, right? When I go into a game, I'm like, oh, okay, we need a Lucio this game, so I'll play Lucio. Oh, uh, we need a tank, so I'll play Winston. That's kind of what I do, right? Although, admittedly, I am, I am probably better at, like, Soldier and certain other heroes to get myself up to, like, my season high. But then when I'm there, you know, there's no way I'm, like, a GM-level, like, a DPS player, right? I need to play tanks at that level and all that stuff. Anyway, so he says his first 100 matches, so this is 3,000 to 3,700 rated, 63 games were fine. So that's actually pretty good, right? 63 out of 100, these games were fine. People all tried to play together. They all tried to win. And these are not 63 wins. These are just 63 games where the team tried to play together. 13 of the games were all DPS matches. Now, he said this caught him by surprise, but he doesn't really catch me by surprise. And honestly, well, yeah, I'm not shocked. I, uh, you guys out there are probably not shocked as well. Um, this happened quite a lot um, in Lower Master, I noticed. And uh, I think when that account placed, I think it placed at about 3.4k. Um, when I ran it through this season, I forget what the name of the account is because I've changed my account name so often. Um, but yeah, there was a lot of all DPS games for me, and as this player says. Around 3k, 3.7k, there were 13 all DPS matches, which is silly. You can't win a game with all DPS. Obviously, this player was playing a support because it's the only thing you can do, right? If you've got 5 DPS, well, try and play a healer. Don't just play a tank, right? Because there'll be no sustain. However, this is the interesting thing. 24 of those first 100 games were throwers. Now, what he classes a thrower as is this. Note, this does not mean if I had a Torb main who only plays Torb on offense and defense. Those players still tend to try, even if they know their picks are harming the outcome of the game. This strictly applies to people who legitimately throw for no other apparent reason than to just, well, derank or be toxic. Now, that's what I would agree, uh, agree is the definition of a troll. There's a lot of confusion, right? People will think... Oh, you're playing Symmetra on attack, you're a thrower. They might not be a thrower, they might want to play Symmetra on attack, and you can't really stop them because, well, that's the nature of Overwatch. They might like Symmetra. However, I'm fairly sure that most people that do that are these kind of people that know, right? They know deep down they are being kind of silly, but they know they can't really be punished for it, and they kind of get off on that. It's like, haha, I'm playing Symmetra on attack. Haha. <laughs> now, actually, it can kind of work because the other team might be like, oh god, they've got a Symmetra. I mean, Symmetra is actually quite powerful on Oasis, so. Even when I see Symmetra's uh, in Oasis games that I'm in, I'm just like, oh, whatever. And we generally win because the other team don't really know what to do with Symmetra. Like, what the hell's going on? So that's not a thrower. A thrower to me is a Torbjorn who builds his turret in the spawn, right? And dances around it. Or I've seen Junkrats that like, jump off the map. Or I've seen people who just shout abuse to other people. Or th this is the, the, the old chestnut that you get, ladies and gentlemen. It's just people who have been in a game before and then they 
queue into this game with you, but they notice somebody on your team that maybe was on the enemy team last time that might have wrecked them or whatever. So they say, I'm going to throw the game because I don't like you. So then they throw the game. And it's like, hang on a minute, what kind of logic is this? You're throwing away your SR even more, but they get off on the fact it's causing that person that just beat them to lose SR. It's so crazy. It's like, what the hell is going on? You silly buggers. You know, it's like, what are you doing? Don't do that. It's so stupid. So the story goes on with this uh, player. So he carries on playing, but then he breaks down what actually happened in those 100 games. What did he do? Like, what was his selections? Well, 54 games he spent as a healer. Okay, 37 games he spent as a tank, 9 games he spent as DPS. So you can see he has basically been supporting the team. But that also tells you kind of a bit of a story. Now, you've got to remember, this. Th these are like stats from just one player. There are literally millions of players in Overwatch, so your experience could be totally different. A while ago, I made a video where it was um, 3k to 3.9k in a day. Now, that's totally doable, but is, was that doable purely off my skill? Well, no, because even if you watch that video back, what I say is what happened was, yes, I was lucky enough to get into teams where they would let me play the roles that I wanted to play. So it was predominantly Soldier 76 at the time. So I always queued into a team which had a main tank and a main support so the rest of the team could flex around. And in some games, I think I did have to slightly flex, but it wasn't a lot. But basically, I was getting the best sort of condition for me to win in every single game from my team. So I could play soldier and I could just play and it would 80% of the time result in a win. So I had a much higher chance of winning. And that's what Overwatch is like. You know, you can easily queue into a game where there are three people that want to play the hero you would like to play. So you have to play a different hero than those other guys argue with each other and then they end up throwing the game. Happens all too often. In fact, most defeats in Overwatch are basically on the hero select screen where it's like, oh, actually, um, uh, this team's really bad because we've got a load of problems with the people on the team because maybe this guy doesn't like another guy or, you know, and it, it's just so frustrating when that happens. So, anyway, he moves on to the next 100 games. Now, this is where it gets interesting because this is where it starts going into where I play the game. So, this is 3.7 to 4.3. Now, admittedly, I've never been 4.3k. So, this guy is a, a better player than me, easily. Um, so, this is what he says out of these next games. Now, this is where it kind of goes in the opposite direction. So he says there were 77 quality matches. And again, a quality match is just where people try to build a team and work together. You could still lose, you could still win, but it's a good game. And that's what we want at the end of the day, right? It's a good game. You don't want to go into the game where it's just an absolute throw, or even if you're just being forced to leave voice comms and try and hard carry on your own or, or whatever. Those games are really not fun. What makes Overwatch awesome is when the team all works as a unit and it's absolutely great. There were four all DPS games. So you can see this kind of still does happen. And this has always been the thing I've said to people because they would say to me, oh, Stite, you don't really know what it's like in the other levels. If you're going on about, oh, I'm playing in GM, blah, 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 and all this stuff, you've got no idea what's happening at the lower levels. And what I always say to that is, well, I literally get thousands of emails sent in a week for overanalyze where people send me their games in. And the majority of those games are in platinum, are in diamond, are in gold. They're all over the place. So I do get to see how it kind of is. And remember, these are generally the best games these players have had that they send in, which I don't really recommend. You should probably send in games where you know you've made some mistakes so we can sort of go over them. But the fact is, right, you, you kind of... My experience is a little bit different to most people, but I am aware of what's going on. At least I think I, I'd like... I am aware more so than most other, like, YouTubers out there and all that stuff. So, yeah, you still do get these all DPS games at the high level. That'll just happen, right? You'll never be able to get rid of that. And then there were 19 thrower matches. And this is the interesting thing, right? 19 people threw uh, in his next 100 games, but 24 people threw in his first 100 games. That is very close, right? So what's going on there? Why are people throwing, right? So he goes into like a little bit of a recap and he basically says that like around GM, he kind of noticed that the quality of the games increased, which I can confirm. They, they do increase, but they increase in, a, in a, an interesting way. It doesn't increase in like suddenly there's loads of voice comms, suddenly there's loads of like friendly players. It just increases in a way where people know what to do with their heroes. You know, I always go on about taking the high ground. I always go on about good positioning, right? Well, they do that, right? If you take like a soldier, uh, you know, high master into GM or whatever, that soldier player will be generally better at target priority, will be generally better at holding a good position. Um, let's just give a very basic example. Say he was defending on Numbani, that soldier will wait on the high ground. He will not stand on the low ground by the payload. Yet, lower level players will stand on the payload and then they will die. They might actually have better aim than that Grandmaster player, but because they don't have the positioning, they suffer as a result. So you get an increase in game knowledge, which does mean you get better games. And this is also why 
at that level, players tend to be a little bit more flexible because at lower levels, they might not realize that the team comp they've got isn't the most sort of optimal or isn't going to work well together, right? And that just comes with experience. Like, I can't really give you... I mean, I can give you examples right now, but they're kind of pointless, right? Because it depends what's going on in your games. And also, it depends what the people on your team are capable of playing. Now, there is uh, there was a little bit of debate in one of the recent videos I made where I showed you me looking at the team and looking at what the heroes are playing on the team, or what the, the players on the team could play. And I'd be like, oh, I can see this guy's played a lot of this hero, that guy's played a lot of that hero. And I would use that to say, hey, um, can you swap to a different hero? Hey, could you do this? Or uh, I can play support if that guy would like to play soldier, or, or whatever the hell was going on. So there is value in that, but <clears throat> it doesn't... Like, if, if you've got a player who has got literally thousands of hours in one hero, you want that player on that hero, right? Regardless of whatever that hero is. Because you know they're going to be very good with that hero, and they might be able to do some interesting things. So, don't use that list to just go, oh, get off that hero, you're going to throw the game. But that is like a complete whole other thing for like a massive debate. And I notice that a lot of people take comments when I talk about that, like, in completely the wrong way. So, maybe I'll make a video on explaining how to use that in detail. Uh, in the future. Anyway, let's go back to what this guy was saying about um, about his game. So, basically, what he's saying is, after all his games were done, and just to go over what his last 100 games were, he played 46 as a tank, 31 as healing, and 23 as DPS. So that's much more spread out uh, on DPS than it was for the initial 100 games, where there seems to be a lot more people playing DPS. Now, I'm pretty sure the reason why that is the case is because I think DPS feel like they carry the game. Like, if you play DPS, you feel like you're killing the enemy. You're the one doing the killing. You're, like, making the game sort of... You you cause the game to be a win, which uh, is, is kind of pretty far from the truth because your tank players allow you to kill the enemy and your supports keep you killing the enemy. So without good supports and tanks, DPS can't really do anything. And this might be a bit of a controversial opinion, but you can pretty much carry on any hero in Overwatch. You can carry on support, you can carry on tanks. If you know what you're doing, you can carry 100%. So, all in all, over these 200 games, over all the statistics this player provided, he says that 21.5% of his games were lost because of toxic players that threw for no reason. 21%. That is a massively high number. Now, remember, this is just one player's experience. But all you guys out there will know. I will know. I don't know whether mine is 21% in the games that I've played, but it feels very often that you get somebody who throws the game because they are toxic or they are a troll. I'm not talking because they've picked the hero you don't like, I'm talking because they threw the game, which actually, we can relate back to the video I made where um, I think it was, uh, oh, was it Horizon or, I think it was Volskaya, but we had a guy on our team who is honestly a known troll at that end of the game, like everyone knows this guy is a guy who does throw games all of the time. Um, and we managed to have a pretty rough defensive um, phase because I think they rolled through pretty quick. So he just decides to play Hanzo. And I looked at his player profile. And I'm like, this guy has not played Hanzo at all this season. I'm like, uh, he's, he's obviously throwing. I know this guy is throwing now because I know who the guy is, right? And he is a major thrower. And I'm like, okay, this is not great. Um, so I say to the guy, hang on, can you you know, maybe play something else? Like, can you do this? Can you do that? We can still win. Like, I don't say it in an aggressive way. I'm not like, get off that Hanzo, you're so bad. But that guy does change his hero back to, I think, Genji, which he could play, and then just leaves the voice comms. And it's like, those kind of players are very irritating in Overwatch, but you get them all of the time. Like, they almost just throw games because, well, whatever. Like, maybe that's just because of who they are or, or God knows what. Anyway, this basically is resulting in literally one in five games are a defeat because of thrower. Now, remember, this guy's playing at a high level. So if you go down the tiers, you could theoretically say it's actually more often you will get somebody who throws at lower levels. Which honestly isn't great, is it? And Blizzard, well, they really need to do something about this. The ultimate question is, why are people throwing, right? And I think the reason for this is... I was actually thinking about this while I was on the plane coming home yesterday. And um, I, I'm pretty sure it's it's not because there, there isn't any point to Overwatch. It's because that sort of desire to become a better player, to sort of improve yourself is starting to disappear because we are now coming towards the end of season five. I will say right now, I have played season five the least of every single competitive Overwatch series that uh, season. I usually slam like competitive games six hours a day. I haven't really been doing that this season. I've been playing different stuff. I mean, even now with Deathmatch out, I'll probably play more Deathmatch, right? Um, towards the end of the season than I will um, competitive. And maybe Deathmatch will get competitive. Who knows, ladies and gentlemen. But 
I think it is just a case of people, they haven't become bored of the game, but they know what they can get away with, right? We know there's an increased punishment system. We know people do and, and will get punished more often for being a troll and doing stupid stuff. But that's only like one of the issues, right? The problem is why are these people throwing? And I guess I'll end the video with this right now in Overwatch. It only takes one person to throw the game, but it takes six people to win the game. And there are so many elements that cause people to become tilted that it's very often you go into a game of competitive and you might have somebody who, who has tilted in a previous game and so they're more inclined to do it this game because of literally a whole host of reasons. And it's down to Blizzard to try and resolve this. It's not down to us as players. I have made videos trying to sort of convince people to be friendly, convince people to be uh, non-toxic and, and they have got millions and millions and millions of views combined, yet nothing has really changed, you know? If you are a player out there who does spread positivity, you are an awesome player and you should keep doing that. That's what you should do when you play Overwatch because I honestly believe that will be infectious. But there you go, ladies and gentlemen. According to this user on Reddit, of which there is a link to this post in the description of the video below so you can check it out in its complete detail because it is a very detailed post. Essentially, 20% of his games are a throw, which is not great. Let me know, guys, what your games are like in the comments below. Let me know if you feel like you are sort of receiving one in five defeats because of a troll or a thrower. Maybe you've kept statistics. If you have, I would be very interested in seeing these statistics. And the best way to get them to me would be to tweet to me on at UnitLostGaming. All right, guys, I'm in Stylosa. This is Unit Lost, and this has been a discussion on the frequency of trolls and throwers in Overwatch. You can follow me on Twitter, which is at UnitLostGaming. You can join the Discord, which is discord.gg forward slash UnitLost, and I will catch you on the next one. Toodaloo.